um, what um, he, uh, our master, our, our, our Lord Jesus and Christ Savior, um, deemed as marriage. So, um, and if you want to, you can uh, definitely follow on up. Um, so just from the uh, uh, Webster Dictionary uh, or definition of what uh, marriage is, um, it's the, 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 the ma marriage, the state of being united as spouses in a consensual or contractual um, relationship um, uh, recognized by law. Um, that, that's from the Webster Dictionary, uh, what they state marriage uh, would be. Um, now, from the Wikipedia version uh, or uh, definition, uh, marriage, also called matrimony or wedlock, it is a cultural and often legal recognizing, recognized union between people called spouses. Um, and that's a version of the uh, um, Wikipedia definition of it. Now, um, if you would for me go to um, Genesis uh, uh, 2 and um, Genesis 2, and I want to start, at, I think I want to start at verse 20. Chapter two, verse, start at verse 20, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 21, my apologies. And I'm gonna read from verse 21 through 24. And this is where uh, God, uh, this is to me. This is what God version, uh, God definition um, uh, of marriage was, uh, or where it started from. Um, so, verse twenty-one. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs close up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made a woman and brought her unto, unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother, he shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And and I, I truly believe that. Uh, uh, between me and my wife, uh, uh, we have, I, I truly feel we have become one flesh together because we, we sh well, we kind of share each other's thoughts sometimes, you know, um, finishes each other's sentences sometimes. Um, um, you know, uh, just, just sometimes we look at one another and sometimes it's like we're thinking the same thing sometimes. Um, so, I, like I said, I truly believe uh, that message uh, that you do become one. If you're in tune with your spouse, um, you will become one. Um, uh, you know her habits, uh, know what she likes, know what she dislikes. Um, she know your habits, know what you like, know what you dislike. Um, and and, uh, and and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's a great thing uh, uh, to to be able to to uh, 
just share share that life experience with another person. Um, uh, you, 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 I mean, for me, um, and I don't know if I, I've, uh, I, I've, I've been married before, once before, and, and, and I don't think it was a godly marriage because with this marriage that I have me in now, I truly feel that it's a godly marriage because he is the head of our household. He leads our way every day. Um, we pray to him every day. Um, we ask for his forgiveness every day. We ask for his, his strength every day. Um, we ask for him to, to, to just shed his, his, his blood with uh, and cover everybody with his blood every day. My wife and I do this on a daily basis. So yes, you do become one. Um, the things for me, um, uh, uh, as living a godly marriage, um, like I, I, I named one of them is he is the head of our household. I'm the man of the household, but he is the head of our household. Um, and without him being the head of our household, I truly don't know we would have a godly marriage. I truly don't know where we would be at right now. Uh, if it would be genuine. Um, so that's that's the first thing for me as 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 is uh, having a godly marriage is is basically having him having God lead the way. Uh, the next thing for me um, to to a godly marriage is uh, is what Pastor touched on at the beginning of the service. Uh, obey God's commandments. Um, I mean, uh, um, love thy neighbor. We truly need it today in these times. Um, so. Um, These times are, are are definite times that we we we've always I, I think we've I can say we've always had it hard in life, um, but we had struggles in life uh, being uh, 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 just being on this earth. So, um, but with uh, with God leading the way and and like I said, o obeying His commandments. I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect. But it does make it so much easier for me. And I think for my marriage and for our marriage, me and my, my wife and I. Um, the next thing for me, um, uh, for being uh, living a godly marriage, um, be righteous. And that's just... I mean, stretch. Just do the right thing. Yeah, you know that they made a movie about it. Just you know, do the right things. Be righteous. Do just be right. You know, we all know. You know, as we was growing up, you know right from wrong. We know right from wrong. So just do the right thing. Be righteous. Do the right thing, and love on God, and 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 let Him lead. Let Him lead the way. And uh, again, this is a, 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 a the, how I feel what what a godly marriage should be. Um, as a couple, uh, my wife and I, we we um, we try to be generous. Uh, this is another uh, take on it. Be, be be generous. If you're able to do it, uh, do it. I mean, if you're able to help someone um, with their experience. Uh, uh, sharing your life experience with another person of, of being a married and being in marriage, share that life experience with them. Um, um, it may turn someone else's life around. So, um, and uh, the other piece for me, um, 
is to uh, make peace. Make peace with yourself. Make peace with God. Make peace with others that you may not want to make peace with or you may not have no desire to make peace with them, but make peace. And I'm sure that uh, by doing that, um, you'll see many blessings to come. And uh, the last thing for me, um, um, again, this is just something that, you know, we all have haters and doubters and, and uh, out there in this world, uh, but, but, but bless your enemies, say a prayer for them. Uh, bless them. Uh, speak highly of them uh, to Jesus, to the Lord. Speak highly of them to them. Um, and, um, and, um, I, 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 I do believe, uh, you know, when you, when you turn the other cheek, uh, you know, uh, it does pay off. It pays off. So, so, so living a godly marriage, there's, there's so many things, uh, that, that living a godly marriage, um, my wife and I have have become what we've been doing, um, how we've been praying and 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 and, and with the Lord and and um, just just send his send his prayer his his prayer on a daily daily basis. I truly it's been a it's been a wonderful marriage guys to, for me, I'm just saying for me, it's been a wonderful marriage. Um, I mean, you know, I haven't, uh, we've been married uh, going on five years now and um, we thank pastor for uh, our couple counseling uh, during the, um, the first, uh, before we got married, that was a wonderful thing that she shared with us. Um, and um, so thank you pastor for sharing that with us. And just lead, let us lead down this path that we've been going down, um, that we want to continue to go down, that we want to continue to lift God up, that we want to continue to praise him and lift him up. Uh, we want to continue to praise and lift each other up. Um, there's nothing like being in a marriage and if, if you don't have a person that, uh, um, they always say have your back, but they, it's more than having your back. They need to have your whole surround. And you need to have that whole surround. Um, so, so that's for me is being a, being, uh, being a, being in a godly marriage. Um, I love my wife. Um, she, 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 she tells me today all, every time, let me go first. I want to go first. And I say, well, if it's the Lord's will, you know, whoever whoever goes first goes. But uh, we don't ever want to lose each other. Um, um, but uh, we know there's going to come a time that, you know, uh, on this earth at least, um, that, uh, you know, you separate from the body. Um, so um, thank you for allowing me to share my experience of my marriage with my wife. Um, and I hope and pray that it touches or, or, or if, if anyone um, uh, just need to, to uh, I'm sorry, just need to vent or whatever, just, just think about those things, um, you know, um, being as before as being in a marriage or just in general in, in life. Um, so I love you guys. I thank you guys. Um, I thank pastor for allowing me to speak on, 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 on this subject of a godly marriage. And, uh, and uh, thank you. And I will turn this over to my lovely wife.
Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. 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 He's so passionate. Good job, baby. That was that was beautiful. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Anthony is always passionate like that. He is always very open and he communicates very clearly. And he's just as I'm sitting here wiping my tears in my eye, trying to see my scriptures and my words I wrote down here. Um, it's just it's just a beautiful beautiful man i am so blessed and so thankful to have him um it is an honor being his wife um as we started this first of all you might be asking why are they in two different locations um i tested positive for covid so i'm isolated in my room upstairs he's downstairs um it ran through the household we've all had it but i'm still hanging on i feel okay but um i'm still testing positive i tested this morning it's still positive so that's why we're in two different locations right now. Um, but when we started this, this journey, because it, it was just such a blessing from God to be able to share this with, with the saints, with, with everyone. And he kind of did his research and I did my research. And when we came together to kind of look at what we, what we found, he found marriage and I was kind of led to love. Um, so what I want, I want you to do first, everyone, is let's go to um, Proverbs 18 and 22. Proverbs 18 and 22. I know we've all heard this scripture many times, but when I, when I read the Bible, you know, I, I would, one, put my name in it or put myself in it um, because I know that this is, you know, God's word. And I, I want it to pertain to me and my situation and, and what's, What's going on? But Proverbs 18, 22 says, Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor with the Lord. Um, and so that on that that same no, whosoever findeth a husband, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor with the Lord. Um I remember, gosh, probably almost 20 years ago. Um, this is back when Aunt Doris was doing. Bible study in her living room at home. And it's where I started to get very serious about my relationship with God. And I remember praying to him and saying, if I am to get married, Heavenly Father, I need you to pick that man because I'm doing a horrible job. Of it. So I need you to do it for me. Because I, I am no good at it. So I, I, I prayed that prayer. I let it go. Went on about, you know, life, work, school, doing what I was doing. You know, and I, I think that every woman should have their their standards. You should kind of have things that you know that you, you know, you want. You know, you've got your rules and things that you do. One of my rules was that I wouldn't date someone from work. And that's where I met Anthony at, at our, our prior job. And it's, it's you know, so I know that God has got to have a, a sense of humor because he's, he's thinking, oh, you got your rules, girl, but you don't, you don't control nothing. It's, it's my world. I control all of this. And he made it very clear, this is your husband, this is the one I picked for you. And it's just, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful thing ever since. So I thank God for his, oh, for his choice in my husband. He did a wonderful job picking my husband. Um, what I also did, like I said, I was searching love. So I went to Webster's um, definition of love. Um, and, and Webster's definition of love is a strong affection for one another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Um, an attraction based on sexual desire, um, affection and tenderness felt by lovers. Um, I looked also at the Oxford Dictionary and it said a, a very strong feeling of liking and caring for somebody or something, especially a member of your family. So then I said, what does the Bible say about love? Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to start at 4. So 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. First Corinthians 13 and 4, charity, which we know is love, suffered long and is kind. Love envieth not. 
love valid, not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemingly, seeking not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Six, rejoices not in inequity, but rejoices in truth. Seven, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Um, the definition in the Bible is the definition that us as Christians follow. Love is, is long suffering. Love is not puffed up. It, it's not vanity. It's not about you. It's about others. It's about love, honoring, and respecting others. Um, I have a, another um, scripture. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 20. My husband talked about this a bit where he talked about him being the head of household. And I agree. I agree 100%. And I believe this is a, uh, a scripture that uh, um, I remember, you know, in my younger years of a Christian saying, oh, no, this will never happen. But when you turn your life over to God, when you start to learn God's word and start to understand what he means when he says what he says, you can do these things. These things are what you are supposed to do. So Ephesians 5 and 20. And I'm going to go through 25. Um, so Ephesians 5 and 20. Giving thanks always for all the things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's that scripture. That's that verse there that lots of people will use in a way that is not the way that God intended it to be. Um, as we continue on, and ladies, make sure if somebody ever tried to say this to you, that you continue on through the rest of this. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And then 25, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And there, there's, there's more that I wanna read into this, but I wanna make it very clear that you submit yourselves to your husbands, but your husbands have to submit themselves to Christ. They have to love Christ the way that Christ loves the church. He gave his life for the church. He gave his life for all the people, for all. And husbands are supposed to submit to Christ. If they are submitting to Christ, you submitting to your husband, it, it'd be very, very easy because he will be kind. He will be, he will be caring. He will care about everything. Like my husband said before, it's not just about having your back. It's about having your your whole world. It's about making sure that you are taken care of completely. But in that same sentence, ladies, you have to do that for him. You have to be there for him. You have to support him. You have to be his, his helper, his rock, his strength. Um, when our, you know, our men go out into the world, there's just so much negativity and so much, there's, there's a lot of bad. When they come home, they should be able to find peace and calm and love and tenderness. Their home should allow them to rejuvenate so they can go back out and do what they need to do in the world. Um, in Ephesians, we're gonna stick around in Ephesians. I wanna to go to um, Ephesians 28 and 29. So it's still Ephesians five, but it's just verses 28 and 29. So just a few down from where we were. Um, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord in church. Amen. If you are to love your wife as you love yourself, just like you're to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But let's also go to Ephesians 5 and 33. 
Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even, even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. When you put God number one in your life, it is so easy to do these things. It is so easy to do these things. Anyone that knows me from the past, for me to, to say that I would submit myself to someone, it was just completely unheard of. But now that I have turned my life over to Jesus Christ, it is so easy to submit to Jesus, to submit to my husband, to do what is good, to do what is right, to do what is true, to do what is real, to do what I feel. Um, I just am so, so thankful to get the opportunity to share this with all of you. Um, I just, I, I am so thankful and so honored to, to have such a great man in my life. It is, it is, just the other day I asked him, I said, do, have we had an argument? And we, this entire time that we've been together, there has been no argument. You know, there's been discussions, which I think is important in a marriage. You've got to communicate with one another. You've got to have understanding with one another. You share everything. There are times when he and I can look at each other and know exactly what we're thinking in a particular situation. Because, you know, there's just been prior discussions about that situation. And it is, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. I am so thankful. Um, that song by William Murphy, that is, you know, it's my season for grace and favor. That prayer that I did 20 years ago, and the way that we planted those seeds, the way I planted those seeds, and that I, I prayed and turned my life over to God. And, and just, like I said, I wasn't perfect, but I was faithful. I continue to pray. I continue to, to do his work. Um, the Mary Mary song, the God in me, I would be in places like at work. And, and I remember someone asking me, why are you always smiling? Why are you so happy? Especially after, you know, some tragic things that have happened in my life. And I, I had to let them know it was Jesus Christ. That's why. So I just, I recommend guys that you first put Jesus first, um, love him with all of your heart. That was my final, um, <laughs> my final scripture, the pastor. Um, talked about at the very beginning, which is Matthew 22. Um, and, it, and it is, is that God has to be number one in your life. If God is number one in your life and you follow his commandments, it will be very easy to have a godly marriage. It will make your life easier. It will give you abundant life. It will give you peace on earth. It is a beautiful thing. And God has had it for us the entire time. We just, you know, like you said, we were born in sin, so we came out here trying to do it our way. And I, I, I realized a long time ago, I can't do it my way. I need to do it God's way. And when I chose God, everything just got better from there. So I thank you, Pastor. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share this with the saints. I, I, I thank the Lord for guiding our hand and our heart and our minds and our words through this. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. So thank you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. To a beautiful people. Yeah. Oh, there's Pastor Thurman over there. Oh man, we are so happy for you. Yeah. It was absolutely perfect. Mm. And I love uh, what your husband said God is the head. I'm the man, but God is the head. <laughs> That's key. And then his wife finished up with let God. Pick mm. the man for you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you'll end up with the right one. Wow. Right. I'm, yes. I'm really touched. And uh, yes. I, I want to just thank the Lord for that. I wrote down all y'all words here. I'm going to type them up and, and uh, uh, do something real cute with it. <laughs> y'all know how I like to do that graphic stuff. But uh, to God be the glory. Amen. And to Pastor Thurman, I, I always want to thank you for trusting your children with me. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. And we love you. And oh, so she's here in town visiting in the other room. <laughs> I'm in the other room. Yes. We're all in separate rooms, but God is in, in all of them, you know? Yes. yes. Praise God Amen. for that. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Pastor Thurman, you want to say something? And then I'm going to go on to uh, my 15 minutes. Okay, well, God is just so good today. I'm telling you, these babies around here, I just love them. And and the way they're talking about their one, their one, all right. They get to look at each other like, I'm like, what are y'all doing over there? <laughs> you know, they are definitely one. They can look at each other, tell what's going on. I read it to with my own eyes. You know, sometimes they be want to hold the remote and then want to look at the other one. <laughs> one they all, they say, uh, 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 it's my time. I said, uh uh, it's all our times. You know, we're going to get it together, you know. But God is just so good. I'm just so grateful for my California family. I thank you guys for just loving my son. And Bridget, I thank you for just being a great wife to him. And I see it in you, I hear it in your voice, and, and I'm, I live with it with you. And I see there's no change in you. So I thank God for you today, Bridget. And I thank God for my son being the man that he is. And Pastor, I thank you for being the pastor. Congregation, I thank you guys for loving on them and just keeping them lifted up in Jesus' name. And I yeah. love you guys. <laughs> love you too. Love and we love you. my too. eyes out. Thank you. <laughs> and it's good, uh, it's good seeing you. Amen. Yeah. Well, y'all know your pastor got something to say about marriage. All right. <laughs> so uh, we, and it's going to be on PowerPoint. So go on, get ready. Go ahead on mute yourself and let's get this message on because God got a lot to say about mm -hmm. marriage. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the children almost took my message, but that's all right because it's the same message. It's from God. So we're going to go from the beginning here. The first and great commandment is that you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. God has to be first in every human's life. If you want to have a blessed life, whether it's single or married, God should be first. That's it. God should be first, period. That's the first commandment. Then we go on to the second. Then he said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Who is thy neighbor? Everybody else, including who you marry or don't marry. Everybody else. The success of all relationships depends on how good your relationship with God is. Period. Dot. If you don't have God as head of your life, you really can't expect a good relationship with anybody else. That's the word. Amen. And you know, that's what I got to give you, the word. So the number one reason that God made male and female was for procreation. On the third day, he made the grass and the herbs, and they brought forth after their kind whose seed was in their cell. This is in Genesis uh, uh, 1. Let's go to Genesis 1, and let's look and see the number one reason that God made male and female. He made it of all kind, every, not just humans, but all kind. In Genesis 1 and 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after he is kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. That was the first thing that uh, uh, he created to bring forth after his kind. He created also the sun and the stars and the moon, but he didn't create them to, to bring forth. You don't see but one of them, but the grass and the herb. And then in verses 20 through 22, he created the, the, the animals of the sea and the air, 20. And God said in 20, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, 
and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and do what? Multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And then in 24 and 25, uh, God made the animals on the earth. So over there, he just made the sea, the, the birds and the fish. Now on the sixth day, he created animals. In 24, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And then in Genesis 2 and 18, 2 and 18, the Lord's God said, it is not good for man that the man should be alone. Let, I will make him a help meet. So when he said, let me make him a help meet, he meant I need to make man a, 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 a female so he can procreate. So the, the, the grass and the herb was procreating, the fish and the sea and the, the fowls were procreating, the cattle was procreating. Now God said, I got to make a female for the man so he can procreate. In Genesis 1, 27 and 28, we'll see the creation of man. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So that's the number one reason that God made male and female was for procreation so that man could bring forth after his own kind. All of the children are in the seed of the man. And so when men choose, and that's one thing I could say about human beings, we do know how to multiply. <laughs> if we don't do nothing else, we multiply. We got a whole lot of children out there, amen, for multiplying. And so women, when a man uh, and me and you listen, when you are out there seeking, you are seeking to bring forth your seed. Number one, men should be very careful what woman they give their seeds to because all women ain't right. Amen. So I'm going to show you a video. It's real cute here uh, about the male species. Uh, I think it's one of them birds, but how, what, what they do. Now, this is in them. So men don't even notice that when they're out there running after women, all they're really trying to do is produce after their own self, but they don't know that. They don't know that. You're giving your seed here, you see that seed there, you see your little seed popping up all over. Amen. It should be, it should be clear that the number one reason that God created male and female was to bring forth children. Amen. And so that's in us. And uh, so uh, let me let me play this um, here, really cute video, right? <laughs> it's so cute uh, of these males. And that's how you men be acting too. I want to let you know, men be dressing up, trying to lure women and tempting them, not even knowing that they're trying to bring up, bring it after their own kind. But uh, uh, that's what they do. Now, just a bird of paradise. Now, y'all listen to this here. In the tropical forests of New Guinea, one male is dedicated to making an unforgettable first impression. The six-plumed bird of paradise is cleaning his display ground. He obsessively tidies every fallen leaf. His stage must be meticulously tidy for what will be an incredible performance. A few attractive berries to help decorate the floor. His final touch is hardly ever seen. Might he think he's found a bit of old snake skin? Some scientists believe he's trying to add the scent of a snake to ward off predators. For others, it's a cleaning cloth and he's polishing a perch for a female.
Later, he uses a bigger bit of rag and does the same. Only strong, healthy and well-fed males can afford the time and effort for the most meticulous preparation. And in theory, they're the ones with better genes to pass on. He'll have a highly critical audience. So it's time to rehearse the main act. His dance steps perfected, he's ready to start the show for real. He spots a female nearby, so quickly goes to get more berries to tempt her in. Disaster! He's left his polishing rag on the dance floor. It's perfect for her nest. She flies off without even seeing his dance. He delivers his berries too late. He never got a chance to win her heart, and he lost his precious polishing cloth. Back to work. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, that is. That right there, that cracked me up. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> See you men. Y'all didn't know what y'all doing right after us. Oh, oh, oh let me go. Oh, there y'all at it again. Let me stop this. Stop. Ooh. Uh. Lord God. <laughs> he did the equivalent of getting a haircut and cleaning up his car and getting his house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, all that, all that. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Boy, these men just won't stop it. Stop it. I'm trying to stop this shit. <laughs> I hope that's it. <laughs> I hope that's it with the males. <laughs> but really, the reason I brought that forth is because it's in them. In the same way you men running after women, y'all thought y'all, and you picked the prettiest one just after the prettiest, because you want to bring forth seed. And women be very, uh, I, I think we should be highly honored when a man run after you, because what they're saying is, I want your babies. <laughs> so and so let's get on back to the description. Uh, we had our fun now, but that's it right there. Amen. So let's go back. I love God's word. I love his creation. I love everything about it. Hallelujah. So we're going back here to uh, slideshow number two. All right. From current slide. Well, let's just go from the beginning. Okay. So the number one reason was for procre procreation. That is to reproduce themselves. So uh, Malachi 2.15 says, why did he make them one? So they could raise up godly seed. That's the number one reason. Not to make kids out there just doing your seed everywhere. Just raise up godly seed. 
And uh, so man was not made for woman, but woman was made for man. And the scripture's right there, 1 Corinthians 11, 7 through 9. Woman was made for man to bring forth his seed. Period. That's the number one reason. But there's other reasons. Somebody need to uh, uh, mute themselves. I don't know who it is. Uh, but uh, people seek to get married for other reasons too. The top reason is for procreation, to bring forth after their own kind. The, another reason is to escape fornication. Another reason is to marry for companionship or just to share your lives together. But whatever the reason, it is a covenant that requires unconditional love and commitment. We already have the scripture from uh, the, the, uh, 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 the wife. Uh, the Bible says to the man, he who finds a wife, finds a good thing and favor of the Lord, which means the man is looking. And wasn't them birds looking? And just the same way them birds looking, them men be <laughs> all dressed up and Lord and trying to tip the, us females. Well, y'all didn't know it's to make babies, but, and, and y'all did a good job out there just making babies. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And that's one thing we do. If we don't do nothing else, we show not appropriate. Hallelujah. And then, but the woman, the wife, is supposed to do the husband good all the days of her life. Not uh, uh, one day out where she just can't stand him and she just go, every day of your life, a wife, you're supposed to do your husband good. But Paul said, let's go to 1 Corinthians and let's get this teaching on marriage. Paul said, it's not good to marry. And what he said, but he said, it's better to marry than to burn. <laughs> so we got to go to the scripture. 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. And he gives a reason why he says these things. And the reason is, if you're married, you have to devote a, a, a lot of time to your husband. And it deflects, it can deflect Oh, I, I miss spirit Mary. Look at that Mary up there. Oh, yeah, I guess that's right. Okay. Yeah, chapter seven. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, First Corinthians seven. And one, verses one and two, the reason is to avoid sexual immorality. So chapter, uh, First Corinthians seven, one and two. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it's not good for a man to touch a woman. He said, don't even touch her. Don't touch her. Because if you touch her, you want to have sex because there's a drive in you to make babies. Because God put that in you. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So the number one reason uh, is to procreate. And the, uh, uh, the next one is to avoid, uh, Paul says, to avoid uh, fornication, because fornication gets you in hell. Fornication is sexual immorality, which is having sex outside of marriage. Hebrews 13 and 4 says the marriage bed is honorable. Marriage is honorable. And the bed is undefiled. See, that's what the Thurmans have. They have marriage, which is honorable. And the bed is holy and God is the head. See, you can love somebody and have sex with them. And if you're not married, God's not the head. And so it's defiled. It is not favored. Only a godly marriage has favor on it. I want y'all to understand that. And then just can't anybody get married. A man can't marry a man and expect God to bless it. A woman can't marry a woman and expect God to bless it. In Leviticus 18, God made laws against all manner of sexual immorality. Men were having sex with men. Women were having sex with women. Uh, sons was having sex with their, their father's wives. Brothers was having sex with sisters sisters with brothers they was having sex with if there's any children put your 
fingers in their ears. They was having, people was having sex with animals. You'll find all that in Leviticus 18. Even today, I've seen on Google where a woman married a dog. And it wasn't just because she loved him, it was for sexual purposes. So uh, just because you get married, don't mean God has got you. The marriage that God ordained is right there in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 2. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own what? Wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Let's look down at 7 and 9. Paul said it's better to be single than to be married. So for those of you who are single and you're satisfied and you ain't got no problem with it, ain't nothing wrong with you. It's this world that tell you something wrong with you. You must be something wrong with you. You ain't fornicating. You ain't doing it. That's the world standard. But God said in the in here in verse seven, in first Corinthians seven, uh, seven through nine, for I would have that all men were even as myself. He was single. But every man has his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to abide even as I. He said, stay single. It's good. He said, be like me. He said, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm content. There ain't nothing wrong with being unmarried. Now, if you want to marry, if you want to have sex, people, it's better to marry than to burn. That's what the word says. Now let's go down to 27 through 28. He tells people that's married, don't be trying to get out your marriage. And thus, those that ain't married, don't be trying to seek no marriage. Bridget told it. She said, I'm going to let the Lord pick. If the Lord wants you to have a wife or a husband, Serve the Lord, love, spend your time loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and let God bring you that. He'll put the desire in your heart and he will do it. But you run out there and try to find you something, you're going to mess up. I've seen it a thousand times. So verse 27 and 28, he says, are you bound to a wife? Don't seek to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Don't be trying to look for another one. But, and if you do marry, you haven't sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. He said, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. When people get married, thinking that marriage is all this, that, and the other, look, this is two people coming together. You're going to have some trouble. So you definitely need God. <laughs> you're going to need God on your side. Amen. You, you know, these, 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 these marriages that ain't got God as the head, uh, they got trouble. And so at least one of them people that is, is beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We've been, uh, been testified today how beautiful it is when God is the head of the man's life and God is the head of the woman's life. When God is the head of that marriage, how beautiful a marriage is. But if, uh, 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 God is not the head of one uh, uh, of their lives, there's trouble. If God is not the head of either of their lives, is more trouble. So these, the title of this is the blessings of a godly marriage, where God is the head of his life, God is the head of her life, and God is the head of that marriage. It says right there, when you come together, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. We all looking for to get married and then here come the trouble. Well, if God's the head, he'll show you how to deal with it. He will. But if he's not your head, you, you're in trouble. So 32 to 40. But I would have you without carefulness, he said, he that is unmarried. Look at it, you single people. He that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord, that is a blessing. 
but he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife or his husband. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the thing, the unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit, but she that is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is coming, that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So let me undo this and we'll finish this up. It is a blessing to be part of a godly marriage. We had a great testimony, a beautiful testimony. And the reason their marriage is beautiful because God is not just the head of Deacon Thurman. God is also the head of Deaconess Thurman and God is the head of that marriage, amen. And so those of you who are single, don't listen to the world saying that you just got to be married. No, you don't. If you're single as a Christian, you are in a good position. Amen. You can serve the Lord without distraction. I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. But sometimes I got to care for Deacon Harold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he's a distraction because I Lord make a way. But uh if you ain't married, don't be looking to be married. If 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 God put a desire in your heart for husband and wife, ain't nothing wrong with it. Let God choose your spouse. If you're in a relationship that is unholy, it's defiled. That's what the word says. Hebrew 13 and 4 says the marriage. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled and it will not work if you are not, if, if God's not the head of your life or God's not the head of her life, you can get married and it won't work. So I would advise you to come out of those ungodly relationships and seek your singleness with God and allow him to bring you together and all the, 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 the Thurmans are doing is they didn't marry to procreate. They didn't have their babies. But there's more reasons to marry. They married to share their lives for the rest of their lives. What a blessing and what a testimony to a godly marriage. Let's open up and give God Amen. the glory and the honor. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. We all wait on the Lord. If you want to yes. be married, ain't nothing wrong with it. Just make sure that God is the head of your life and you ask him, just like the deaconess said, select the husband. Choose him for me. Choose him Amen. for me. Amen. Because you want a godly man and yes. you want a godly wife and yes. you want a Godly marriage. Woo, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, glory. I'm going to turn it back to Deacon Thurman and ask him to pray us out. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Dear Lord, uh, we just thank, thank you for Lord. another day that you have made. We, we give honor to you. We praise you. We lift you up each and every day that you allow us to be here on this earth. Thank you for the word that you brought forth to us, using us as a vessel, myself and my wife, uh, just to share our testimony, our, our love, our our marriage uh, with our, our, our congregation and, and with the world. Uh, let, we put the world on notice. This is what it, this is what a truly marriage can be like uh, if you, again, allow God to lead the way. So we love each and every one of you guys. We love, uh, we're going to continue to love on the Lord, all of us, we, we, that we, we know we will, and we know that we shall. Uh, we thank you again uh, for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Your, uh, Amen. For the benediction, and then we'll open up yes, uh, to greet one another one more time. All right. 
Thank you, Lord. Now unto him, yes, Lord. meaning God, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. and yes. amen. He yes. is able. <laughs> yes, Hallelujah. Lord. So we've been blessed. You. We've been blessed today. Yes. So go on and open up and, and uh, say thanksgiving to the Lord. Thanks, thanks to the uh, the deaconess and deacon for sharing their godly yes. marriage with us. And y'all have a blessed, blessed day. Amen. 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 Bless you all. Amen. 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 <laughs> Y'all just too sweet. God bless all of you. All you look so good. You, you, listen, you guys look good and highly favored on the Lord. So keep yeah. that highly favor going on in your life. Yeah. God is good. I love that you guys. Thank y'all so much for having this you message be... today. Beautiful message. Y'all better wait on the Lord. so we can see your beautiful faces. Man, I see you, Sister Diane. God bless you, Diana. God bless you, Pastor. Thank God you. God bless everybody. Love everyone. Looking good. You looking good, Brother Thurman. Thank you, good, Brother Thurman. Thank you, Brother Dicky Dicky. Just wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on the Lord. Again, I say, wait Thanks. on the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, everybody. Brittany, you still on there? I love the message, Brother Thurman. Thank you. Thank you. Already Thank knew you. because. I spent a lot of time with your wife during the first five years. You know, me and her um, did our together. We spent a lot of time together. I was at your house maybe about three times. She said, I knew nothing made men like him. <laughs> she told me that a long time. That was before COVID. That's how you wait on the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you. Wait well, on the Lord. It's truly been a blessing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, this should wait. Amen. All right, yes, got my love you. I'm signing out. Take care. Take yeah. Care yeah, take Jesus. care. Bye, y'all. Love you all so much. Yeah, I love you, too. Bye. God bless y'all. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.